Hi, Eddie. Hi, Rosie. Uh, first thing, how is Joe Willock doing? Uh, I haven't seen him this morning, so um, I'll probably have to ring you later. <laughs> so you're not going to tell us? Well, I actually haven't seen him, so I don't know. Uh, from it's Sunday. too early, Razor. Too early. Uh, from Sunday, any other players that you worried about in terms of injuries, fitness issues? Um, what have we got? I think we're we're reasonably okay. I think there's a few tired bodies in the, the squad. It was a really big physical effort for us in the game. Um, but yeah, hopefully nothing too major. Do you want the same again in terms of that physical output against West Ham? Yeah, well, I think we'll need to deliver that. I think it's going to be a really difficult game. Uh, West Ham are, I think, a very good team who have had a, a, a slightly different season with Europe and, and all the games that they've played. But I think they're, they've got an outstanding manager, vast experience. Um, and I thought they recruited really well in the summer last year. So they've got a very strong squad. So, yeah, we're going to need a, a physical performance. We're going to need a, a, another good uh, technical and tactical performance. It's the second match of a busy week for you, but it's also the first of three away games in a row. It's going to be a, a tough and demanding run, isn't it, at this stage, especially with the, the travelling that you'll have to do? Yeah, the three away games is a, an interesting dynamic for us. I think we've been there before. Um, we love playing at home and uh, our results at, at home have been good. But I think our results on the road have been pretty consistent as well. So uh, we're going to need to take points in this spell. Um, so, yeah, we know uh, what's ahead. After West Ham, you go to Brentford at the weekend. Will you stay down in London or somewhere in the south rather than coming back up to the north? Yes, we plan to stay in London. Uh, we plan to try and minimise our, our travelling um, to not fatigue the players, really. So, yeah, uh, hopefully we get that preparation right. After the Manchester United match, you, you praised Alan San Maximum for his performance and everything that he gave you, having referenced the issue with his hamstring, which is why he came off at half-time against Nottingham Forest. Um, how good a performance was that overall, you know, all things considered, at, at both ends of the pitch from him? Because we all know what he can give you in attack, but there's the other side of the game as well that you need from him. Yeah, I thought he gave a, a really good all-round performance, really. I thought, let's start with the ball. I thought he, he's, a, he's a natural dribbler. He wants to dribble with the ball. I think everyone knows that. But I thought his decision-making of when to dribble and when to pass was very good. Um, he got an assist, so he, end product to his game was there. Um, and yes, defensively, he was diligent. He recovered back in and he performed well for the team. So delighted with him personally. And finally, just wanted to revisit some of the comments that you made on Sunday following the game because it was put to you some of these um, allegations of time wasting and using spoiling tactics. And I know you set your position out, but do you think that's unfair on your players when people try and look at that side of the game? Because it was perhaps never more evident than on Sunday just how you like to play with intensity and good football and you're third in the table and you can't do that by just um, being streetwise all the way to the top, can you? It's, it's about how good you are as a team. Yeah, I think that our first intention is always to to play the game and we want, as I said after the game, we want the ball in play. I encourage my players all the time to, to get the ball back in play very quickly. We want to play at a high tempo. We want to try and wear teams down physically. So that goes against sort of what was said about us. Now, of course, there's times in games where you have to manage the game. You have to use experience. You have to do whatever you can to, to get a positive result. So I'm not saying that we uh, we won't do that either. Um, but certainly that's not our first intention in any game. Keith, definitely no time to waste this week, Eddie. It's a good link, Keith. Yeah. Very good. Um, <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking about that. <laughs> um, no game in 16 days, and then suddenly, bang, you've got three in, in six days. How difficult is that to, to manage that situation? Yeah, I think we, we, we knew that was the case. Um, yeah, you go a long time without a game, and it, it did feel like quite a long break for us, but I think we tried to utilise that to the, the best that we could. Um, and then you go bang straight into a really physically intense period. Now, we've got to try and get in between games right. And I think that's the key thing here. So it's about not training and making sure you get your tactical plan across to the players without fatiguing them. So we'll try and do that. Staying down in London, I think that does help us in between games. Otherwise, the travelling then becomes quite a big issue and late nights, lack of sleep. So hopefully we can uh, 
make sure we get to the little details right. So is it essentially just the players who, who haven't played the train that then? Do, they, do they those who have played full 90 minutes, they just rest ahead of the next game? Yeah? No, everyone will go outside and, and do something, but to different degrees of physical exertion. So, um, yeah, everyone will train today. How important was it for, for Callum Wilson to get to come on and get the goal at the weekend? He's, he's obviously had a barren run by, by his standards. You've said you've seen him working as well as he does behind the scenes, but how good was it to see you know, an end product there and moving forward into the remaining games? Yeah, it's important for Callum. I think that he, he, he scores. Um, I saw Callum during the international break really put in a really good shift to, to get himself back to his best condition. Um, he worked really hard on the training, but was trained really well. So I have no hesitation in, in backing him and knowing that the goals will come because, yeah, he's got that experience. I mean, his goal was a typical Callum goal, really good uh, movement in the box, um, used his experience, got a yard of space and finished it well. It feels like it's the first time you've had both both Callum and Alexander Isak at your disposal, you know, at, at full fitness and, and ready to, to attack. How much does that give you hope going into the end of the season that you can get to where you where you want to finish? Certainly, I think we, we need them both fit. And as you say, we haven't had that luxury many occasions this season. Um, they are both very different, but they're both hugely important to us and you need goal scorers and as many as you can get. So um, that gives us real strength and depth. Morning, Eddie. Uh, Morning. Last time you played Manchester United, you said you reacted to the game by going home, pulling the kids in close and watching the game back. <laughs> Did that differ this time? And what was the general reaction from the boys after that performance on Sunday? Uh, I did actually see them when I got home. I got home quite late on Sunday. Um, I think it was about half nine. They were still awake. I'm just trying to think what reaction they gave. Yeah, it was a nice hug and a uh, positive moment. No, not too many compliments coming my way after the criticisms they gave me the previous game. So um, they're quite uh, low on the uh, giving out the positive remarks. Balancing it out every single week. <laughs> they keep me grounded. We saw that uh, that footage in the dressing room after. I just wondered, how do you kind of plan for those teams? Do you plan those sort of team talks after games? Does it just come to you or how does it go about? I've got no idea what I said. Um, those moments sort of fall into a blur for me. Um, I, try, like, I was aware that there was a camera in the dressing room but tried not to think about it because I think then you change the way you, you act and behave and I don't want that I want to be natural in front of my players so it's it's quite a unique situation I've never really had that before so yeah I just tried to be natural I've, I've got no idea what happened We heard Chris Waddle say that Newcastle United are on a mission now to make top four is that how you describe it? Well I think we're on a mission to try and win and to try and achieve and to try and be the best we can be yeah, I th I've sensed that from the players this season that there's a real inner determination, a steeliness about us that we, we're not here to waste time. Uh, we need that to continue right to the end of the season. No pun intended on the wasting time. No, I, again, I, I didn't realise that I was being that clever. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a quick one on the top four rivals, I suppose we can call them. Tottenham player last night. Are you watching that with or without commentary? I was... Yeah, the, the the truth was I was watching that uh, with commentary, but I was watching West Ham while while watching it. So <laughs> I was watching two games at the same time. Um, so no, the priority is always our next opposition and a short turnaround. So I was, yeah, had a, a one eye on that, but my main eye was on watching West Ham. We talk about the fixture schedule, of course, but is this almost a test, an insight into the sort of schedule that Newcastle United are, are planning to have? in future years with the addition potentially of Europe as well? That's a good, good try that. Um, I think that having a lot of fixtures is something that we want um, and we want games. So I've always said playing games is the best thing there is for us, for any footballer, because that's what you're, you're paid to do and that's what you love to do. So we want the games. Um, we know this busy spell is coming. We know April is a key month for us. Next season will take care of itself. And uh, when you stay down in London for an extended period of time like Newcastle plan to do this week, is that an opportunity as well for a little bit more team bonding? Is there anything planned on that front, would you say? Uh, the answer to that is no, there's nothing planned. No, I don't think it's a time necessary for team bonding. I think it's a time for work and, and focus. Um, if there's anything we can do that relaxes the players and gets them in a good frame of mind, then we'd look at it. But no, it's, it's work time.
And just finally from me, I, I know we talked about the midfield, especially from Sunday. Alan Shearer was discussing Joe Willock and Sean Longstaff in particular on Match of the Day on Sunday night as well. I know you won't ever kind of tell Gareth Southgate what to do, but why should Joe Willock and Sean Longstaff maybe be in the thoughts for national call-ups now, would you say? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily push Gareth in that way because I, I wouldn't want that done to me if I'm if I'm Gareth. But I, just speaking about both players, I think they've they've been very consistent this season. I think that's probably been their hallmark, physically, athletically, very very strong. Both players, tactically, I think they've been very good for me. Um, they play in key positions in the team, so they need to have a really high level understanding of the game. Off the ball, they've been really good. So uh, I can't speak highly enough of them both. Joe started to score goals as well, which I think is very much in his game. If you look at the amount of times when we cross the ball, he's in the box. Um, and on one of those occasions, thankfully the ball went to him on, on Sunday, he scored a massive goal for us. So, um, yeah, I can't speak highly enough of them both. Thanks, Eddie. Best luck tomorrow. Alistair? I was thinking about momentum, Eddie, and how important it is in, in sport and how easy it would have been after that, that sort of run of fixtures and then Wembley. Uh, to sort of slip down the table and the performance to stick, but it's been the opposite. So I was wondering how you've how you've managed to flip that. Um, yeah, I think a, a regrouping, a refocus, it was important for us after after Wembley. It felt like a long build up to that Wembley game, and I've said many times, I think maybe n not uh, intentionally, but on a subconscious level, we just lost our focus slightly on what we were doing day to day. Um, there's a lot that goes into surrounding that game. Loads of different things you have to think about and I'm sure the players media wise were inundated with lots of different things. So I was almost pleased the game was done and out the way and then we could regroup and focus solely on the Premier League and thankfully the lads have, have done really well the last three games. They've been three really tough games but we've managed to get positive results. And now we have to keep that going, go into a, a busy period as we've said in April. Uh Fair bit of mention of Joe Willock. I was looking, he'd had 11 shots in the last three games after none in the previous three. So is that something you're speaking to him about, trying to get him to pull the trigger a bit more often? Or is it just just the way it's happened in his, in his form? I think it's more about his positioning rather than shooting. I, I think if in a good position in front of goal, he will shoot. Um, but it's more f for our midfielders, is getting them in into those areas. And I think... The only way they're going to get there is by their team allowing them to do that is by having good possession, um, controlling the ball, moving up the pitch and then making good decisions around the box. And that's where I'd compliment Maxi at the at the weekend. His decision making was really good and it it takes everyone to be aligned for the team to function well. Thank you. Jamie? Eddie, given some of the comments after Sunday's game, do you think your team has been given the respect it deserves? I think so. Um, that's a difficult one because I don't I don't really read too much. I don't really go digging for what people are saying about us. Um, I certainly think we've got the respect between us and our supporters, which is the main the main relationship for me. To make sure that when we step onto the pitch, we respect our supporters by giving everything we can to try and win the game. And that bond and that relationship has been really good. Outside of that, I'm, I'm not really too interested. Just, just that, I mean, Luke Shaw had, had said you'd won it on hard work. I think both he and uh, Ten Hag had suggested you'd won it on hard work rather than quality, and uh, that seemed a bit unfair to me. However we win it, I, I don't really care. Winning is, uh, this moment in time is all that matters. If we win it with a, a good performance, then that's, that's the, the dream ticket for me. I felt we did, so I thought we put all aspects of our performance together. What other people say and other players and managers has, has got no um, no impact on me. Just, just finally from me, um, would you consider this season a success, whatever happens over the next 11 games, or have your targets changed now? Um, that's, a, that's a difficult one. I, I think because there's so many games left, and, you know, you look at the points available, huge number of points. So we have high expectations of ourselves, so we want to try and push. What is success at the end of the season? That that's that's all for the individual to decide. I, I will look at what we give in each game, and then make make my assessment of of what I see. Luke, um, when you look at what's happened to Graham Potter at Chelsea, um, how glad are you that you're at this football club where you have been given that opportunity to build something gradually? Yeah, I'm very thankful to 
to everyone here with the, the welcome that they've given me. I think I'm talking here, owners, supporters, people at the training ground, everyone, staff connected to the football club has, has made me feel at home, to made me feel settled and, and welcomed. And then I'm able to, to try and give my best work and do my best work for, for everyone. Um, I don't take that for granted because I know it, it can be a different environment out there. So I'm very thankful for the support and hopefully uh, it's a relationship that continues to grow. Now, I don't take that for granted in football. It's a very difficult industry. It can change very quickly. And um, I feel for any manager that um, that doesn't get long enough to um, to get the, their ideas across. Has the city and the club got under your skin, would you say? Yeah? Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely feel at home here, which is, uh, I don't say that lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel at home in the area. I feel at home with the people. Um, and I definitely feel at home at the football club. So, um, yeah, I think it's a very special place. And do you get done the other thing? I mean, one thing they've listened to you, haven't they? I mean, that's the other thing as a manager. You've been, you, you've maybe been able to project your ideas on what you wanted to do with the team. That isn't always the case at football clubs. It? No, it isn't. And I think we've formed a good team behind the team. So uh, relationships with owners and uh, the technical staff. It's important you have good relationships. It's important that you're all listened to. So. It's not just my opinion that counts, it's everyone has an opinion and, and what direction we need to go and what we need to do. I think that teamwork's key. And you've got whatever happens, wherever you finish, I'm not going to ask you to predict Europe, but what, whatever happens, you've got another big summer ahead of you, haven't you, in terms of, of what you want to do? And I know the, the ambitions of the football club is to grow year on year, but there's a lot of hard work still to do for that to happen. It's a huge amount of work ahead for us on, on every level because football never stands still. Uh, the team's competing with us at various aspects will all try and do the same thing so we need to be smart with what we do certainly we're on a on a journey that is accelerating very quickly so we need to um, meet those standards with uh, our decision making thank you Greg. continuation of a theme to a degree eddie but you know you said when you have in dubai you spent a little bit of time identifying some of transfer targets now there must be budget a and budget b depending on your league position and if you do stay in the top four that can really allow you to push back on those FFP guardrails, I suppose. Is that, a, is that a consideration at the moment? I think that would be an outcome. Yeah, I, th I think that would be an outcome of what we do. I can't think about the outcome. I've got to think about how we get there. So that's what we're working towards. But de definitely, I think, depending on what happens with where we finish, that will dictate uh, to a large part what we can and can't do in the summer. Yeah, it, in the, there's this theory that top four could come too soon in, in the club's journey but because the ambition which resides here and where the club wants to go can this club not move quickly enough if you know what I mean you know this idea the top four be too soon is, is that nonsense you know you want to finish as high as you possibly can yeah I think it's a dangerous thing for me to to ever say to anybody um, we want to achieve whatever we can we want to push as hard as we can there's certainly no part of us that's trying to um keep anything down because I think that's, that, that goes against my internal beliefs. So well, now we're going for everything and ultimately uh, the league table will uh, tell us where we get to. Jordan, just in recent weeks a lot of your players have came out and said that the, the aim this season is to finish in the, in the top four. Obviously you stayed quiet on uh, the European front, but what is the aim for you at the end of the, end of the season? Yeah, players will always speak. And uh, you know they'll they'll say their own thoughts, which is which is fine. I'm okay with that. I think for me, the aim is to try and beat West Ham and then see where we go after that. Um, I haven't set a target. I haven't um, interacted with those kinds of conversations because I don't think they help us. Yeah. So it's very much game by game and see where it takes us. And just Tom Anthony Gordon has obviously made his comeback on, on on Sunday. What did he make of his cameo and how is he? <coughs> Fitness-wise, after obviously being for, for a few weeks. Yeah, he's in a much better place now. He um, used the international break wisely to get his ankle right. Um, I think he came back ahead of schedule, so really pleased with that. Really pleased with his desire and motivation to try and play and help the team. I think he's got a brilliant uh, mentality. And he's a top player in the making. You know, I think he's got everything he needs. I thought he did really well when he came on on Sunday. Gave us a, a lift at a key time in the game. So, yeah, really happy with him. Don't um, Eddie, you touched on it before, but in terms of team selection, when you've got 
Callum Wilson, Alexander Isak, limited training time, quick turnaround. Um, Alexander Isak starting three games in form. Callum Wilson <coughs> came off the bench, scored on, on Sunday and has such a good uh, record against West Ham. How difficult a decision is that for you tomorrow night? You just made it harder by saying all that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it is. I think I want those decisions. Um, we do have an intense period, so getting the balance right of load and who plays where and when, that's going to be important for us this month. Yeah, and um, on a slightly different note, Jacob Murphy's obviously endeared himself to the Newcastle fans this season, various antics on and off the pitch. Um, pointing to his watch on, on Sunday, is, is a manager, do you pay much attention to that or um, do you just let them get on with it? I think as, as long as everything's respectful and not antagonising the opposition or making too big a statement, I'm, I'm fine with, I haven't seen what, what Jacob did, so, um, but I'm fine with it as long as it's respectful and um, in good humour. Martin Hardy? Hi Eddie, to go back, go back to kind of a couple of points that have been mentioned, Strategically, the club's move, move has moved very well since it's been taken over. Everybody can see it's kind of de there's developments at all levels. Does that mean then you're going to have to draw up three plans if you like Champions League, Europe, and no Europe to make sure that you're on the ball come this summer? Yeah, I think to to, to a degree, yes. Um, I think we need all eventualities covered, so we're not behind the curve. Depending on what happens, um, we're in the process of doing all that work now, me to a lesser degree because I'm preparing for the games, but behind the scenes we are. And it might seem an obvious question, is every part of your ambition matched by those above you here? Yeah, definitely. I think we're aligned. I think we're aligned all through the football club. Um, there's a big determination to do as well as we can in the short term and the long term. And it's exciting that this club, you can, is there no ceiling on it? Yeah, I never put a ceiling on, on what the team can deliver. Uh, I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in putting ceilings on any players or any team's aspect of its performance. So that that goes right through the club. <coughs> Dom Shaw? Hey, I've um, seen an interview with Alan St. Maximum last week where he was saying he's different to what he has been in the past, maybe more professional. Have, have you noticed a change in him from when you got here to now? Uh, yeah, I think certainly there's there's things that we we really believe in um, and I, you know we've set a, a structure in place that we want the players to follow Alan has followed that the same as everybody else um, his performance sorry his behaviour around the squad and um, day to day has been very good no, no issues no problems yeah he's been fine when, when there's a player like that kind of unique talent I guess unique skill set is there a balance between obviously he has to buy into everything that the team's about and everything the team does but then there's also an element of kind of letting them do what, what they do if you know what I mean definitely there is a there is a train of thought that everyone is different and you have to try and know their differences and respect their differences but still try and get them to conform to the basic principles of what you believe in certainly with Alan he's a, such a unique talent I wouldn't coach Alan in the way that I would coach another player because you want his natural instincts and flair to, to still be relevant in his game I, I definitely wouldn't want to change Maxi's um, game in many ways but th there's certain things that I think we can improve and help him with but I think from my perspective you've got to get that balance right between um, getting the team to function while not taking away their natural ability It feels like there's always a bit of transfer speculation around him has been for a, for a few years. Is he a big part of talking about kind of the journey and where you want to be two or three years down the line, certainly next year? Is he, is he a part of, of your plans for the future? Yeah, without a doubt he is. I wouldn't be picking him to play in the team if he wasn't a part of the now and, and the future because I don't believe in that. Um, you know, the rest is up to Alan. Alan has to perform week in, week out to maintain um, his uh, his standing in the group and that, that's the same for any player but we really like him uh, I really respect him and yeah he can make the difference for us Thank you Kieran um, Eddie do, do you feel you and your team are getting under the skin of your rivals <laughs> I, I don't know you'd have to ask them that I, I think all we're trying to do is, is trying to win the game that we're playing the next game we're, we're not intentionally doing anything other than playing our hardest to compete to, to win the match Eighth longest serving manager in the Premier League. He's only been here at 18 months. I mean, does the 
volatility of, of the profession drive you on as well? Is there really the American? It's crazy, isn't it? It really is. I feel like I've just come through the door. Um, yeah, I think it does. I think that it's not a fear, but it's a, it's a reality of the profession that I'm in. It's it's so um, volatile. It can be uh, ever changing in any minute. So you've got to do the best you can day to day to not to survive. It's the wrong way of looking at it, but to to keep the momentum going in the job because you need positive momentum. You need um, a real focus on where you're trying to go. I'm determined to try and stay here for as long as I can. Uh, to do that, I need to be at my best. Okay. Uh, Oscar? Eddie, on, on the Champions League talk, you mentioned earlier that players are always going to speak and, and you're fine with that, but it might not be overly helpful for yourself. What, what's it like in the dressing room environment? Then? Are, you, are you happy for your squad to talk openly about Champions League? To each other or to, to, to you? To each other in the dressing room environment on the training ground on the day to day. Yeah. No, I'd never. I can. You can never control conversations that happen internally with your squad, and I wouldn't want to. They want to talk and dream, and got no issue with that whatsoever. When talking to you guys, that's slightly different. Uh, <laughs> I'd want them to to say a certain thing, but that's uh, everyone's got freedom to voice their own opinions. You never ban a, ban something like that. Then you see do something. if you ban stuff like that, it only gets worse. I think so. Uh, no, I, I don't believe in that way of working. Yeah, uh, last season West Ham got uh, 56 points. You're now only six points off that tally. Does that give you a sense of progress that you are actually close to doing something really special here, regardless of what competition you could end up in? Yeah, that, I think there's a, that feeling of positivity, that feeling of momentum that we have off the back of the three wins. And yeah, we're, we're entering a key stage of the season. So I, I'm sort of in that moment where things look good. But we can't look too far ahead and we can't take our eye off the short term, which is these three massive games we have to come away from home. So I sort of just just let the the momentum and the positivity stay with us as we attack each game. But I don't see the, the point of me looking at the end line yet. Yeah, it's, it's too far away. We're definitely safe from relegation. Just Are we? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think so. Unless someone tells me differently. <laughs> well, of course, yeah, and I think that's uh, yeah, we're right to look at everything, but uh, no, we're very positive at the moment. Um, on Alexander Isaac, um, great performance the other day. He's not the number nine yet. He's still young enough to go on and get that number nine shirt at 23. I know Callum Wilson's the holder of that shirt now, but in the future, is that something you could see him being one of the the great number nines at Newcastle? I think he, he could be. He could be. Um, who knows? I think he's got, you know, he's got a lot to prove yet. I think um, time will be the dictator of that, but he's got all the tools, as you say. I, I don't see a, a weakness in his game. I think he was really unlucky not to score on Sunday at a, a, a few moments, a few chances, especially his header, I think, early in the game from the cross. But I thought his all-round game was very, very good. And again, physically, athletically, he's, he's getting stronger. One of the we spoke to him after the game, and one of the the, the good things I thought he said was that he, he would sacrifice not getting a goal in the game as long as the team won. That must be the, the sort of things you want to hear from your players. Definitely, I spe especially as a striker who who live for goals. That's um that's a good thing. But I think you want that running through your team. You want the team to be at the heart of everyone's mind. Um, of course, you want individuals also to succeed and achieve their dreams, but um, the team is the most important thing. And just finally on um, obviously Joe Willock, Sean Longstaff. Willock got his goal at the weekend. Um, Sean Longstaff had a couple of good chances, but there's improvement to be made from your midfielders to get more goals. Is that, is that a fair thing to say? It's, it's a key part of our team. We need goals from all positions. So our strikers, our wide players, uh, midfielders, they're, they're a key component. They found themselves in the box a lot. Um, Sean, Joe, Joe Linton, depending on who's played the position. Um, so yeah, getting them goals is a, a massive part of the game for us. And I think when you see Joe Willock score a header near enough on the goal line, that's a great sign. That means he's he's making the box, he's timing his runs well. And um, yeah, it was, I thought it was a great first goal for us. The, the interplay, Bruno's cross and Maxi's header, it was a, a superb link up.